Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for watching. I am going to try to keep this video as short as possible and I want to talk about how to create port forwarding rules in Ubiquiti Unify and I also want to talk about, since there are plenty other guides out there, I haven't seen any guides that are also talking about the risks that are involved and what are your alternatives when it comes to port forwarding. So we are going to uh, talk about this as well. Now, basically what port forwarding basically means is that you allow or you create a rule to allow traffic from the internet through an open door that you have basically created through your router and inside your internal network to a computer, to a, a, a server or a, a, to a service, whatever that, that's inside your local network. Now, you might be a, a, a thinking that only you will be using the door that you have just opened when in fact the entire internet can use this open door. So if you have a UDM or a UDM Pro or whatever brand of firewall that you might have, uh, other than how uh, to click this and click that that might change from brand to brand, the basic uh, absolute truth is, is that port forwarding is very bad. What are the alternatives that, uh, that can be used for uh, port forwarding? Well, the first option is the most secure option, but it's also the most involved option, and that's using a VPN. VPN is a, a little more difficult than just to create a port forwarding rules, but it's also the most secure option. I created a video about how to create a remote user VPN in the Unify devices, UDM, UDM Pro, USG, it will be the same for you. I will put, I will put a link to it in the top right corner. But I know that some people might not have a device that, that it supports creating VPN or for some people it might be too complicated. So what other uh, options do you have? Well, if you are uh, about to uh, forward several ports and if you have, for example, a Synology NAS, then you have this solution for free, but you can use uh, uh, something that's called a reverse proxy. And what a reverse proxy will do for you is that instead of opening several ports to several devices on several uh, services, what you will do is to open a single port to your reverse proxy. And the reverse proxy, according to a certain logic that you define in the reverse proxy, will know where to route your connection to which server and to which port and to which service. So instead of opening multiple, ports you will only open one if you must open it. So this will be a way to reduce uh, just a little bit the risk of opening several ports. So we, we talked about the alternatives that are VPN and reverse proxy if you need to open multiple ports then this will reduce you into only opening one port but if you uh, are not able to use a reverse proxy and you must open, uh, create a port forwarding rule, then let's dive right in and see how to actually create the port forwarding rule. That's my uh, remote uh, uh, UDM device. Let's jump right in into settings. I will do it in the new settings menu, although I do like the classic uh, 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 menu a lot better. It's in the advanced features. Let's scroll down into advanced gateway features and port forwarding. Now, I also use port forwarding from time to time, but when I use port forwarding, I do it as a temporary uh, solution just to do something and then uh, to turn it off. And if you are also, and if, if you must use port forwarding, there's a little small thing that you can do in order to maybe not prevent completely any attack on your open port, but just to maybe make it a little bit harder for attackers to natively realize what's behind your open port. So if you, for example, if you follow uh, our uh, diagram that we've seen before, let's say you want to forward a port to a computer remote desktop and remote desktop runs at TCP port 3389. If you will be forwarding a port, for example, let's call it RDP, let's enable it from any, that means from anywhere in the internet. 3389, let's forward it to an example 
uh, internal port. That will be actually the device that you want the, the port to forward you to, the host that it needs to forward you to. That will be an internal address. Let's, for example, if I want to connect from the internet using remote desktop to a, a machine in my network, I will, I will state the port and which internal IP address the computer has and the forwarded port that will be also, let's say classically 3389 and TCP. Now, if I forward the port this way, it will work, but it will also, uh, let's say in the, security in the security world, it will pretty much reveal what's inside or what's on the other side of this forwarded port. Any attacker will realize this is a Windows machine and the protocol that it's used for is RDP. So if you must use port forwarding, then at least use this external facing port forwarding rule to be something else. I don't know, 111111 or forward maybe 1022 or some abbreviated port that is higher than 1024. Those are all well-known ports, but let's say I will use port 2066. I will forward it this way and apply changes. And I will know that if I'm out there on the internet and I need to connect to my internal network, I will write down my DDNS address or my IP address or whatever. And in the end, I will put a colon and the port that I've just forwarded, that's 2066. This way I will still be able to use RDP, but the, forward, the port forwarding rule will take my non-native port, 2066, and divert it or forward it internally to the correct RDP port. This will not maybe uh, completely prevent attacks on this port on the correct uh, service behind it, but it might make uh, uh, the lives of the attacker just a little bit harder. So, this is how you create a port forwarding rule. We have talked about the, uh, the basic absolute truth that port forwarding is bad. You should use VPN. But in general, what are uh, my recommendations if you need to provide yourself access from the outside into your internal network? First of all, using a VPN is the safest way. It's also maybe, let's say, the, more, the most complicated. If you can't use that, then at least use a reverse proxy, at least if you need to forward multiple ports. This will actually help you in only forwarding just one port, just to the reverse proxy. You can limit the port forward to certain sources, and that's a great way to limit your exposure. Let's edit the rule that we've just created. If I know that I only will be connecting to this RDP device in my network from my office, for example, I can state here the IP address, if I have a static one at the office, of my workplace. And this will only open up the port specifically to the IP address of where I'm coming from and not everyone on the internet. In fact, if you're using it this way with a limited source, then port forwarding becomes maybe 90% less risky, if not 99%. So if you must do it and you have the option to limit it, then definitely limit it. And uh, we talked about it, don't open well-known ports. If you must open a port, for example, a port to remote desktop, which just to be absolutely clear, don't forward RDP ports. RDP is not a secure protocol, it's easily hacked. I used RDP just as an example here. So don't open well-known ports. If you must open a port for SSH, for example, which is port 22, don't forward 22 to 22. Forward, for example, I don't know, 33697 and, and forward it to 22 on your internal networks just to make life of attackers just a little bit more complicated. So guys, I would just like to state out that 
uh, I talked uh, I talked about reverse proxy and Wundertech, which is a, a dear friend of mine, has created an absolute, almost perfect video about uh, uh, reverse proxy in Synology. So if you are you are a Synology user or owner, you have a reverse proxy for free. And definitely watch this video if you want to understand how exactly to configure it. I also recommend subscribing to Wondertech because Wondertech creates absolutely great uh, videos, especially on Synology, but also on Raspberry Pi and other stuff. Definitely subscribe to Wondertech. And I would also like to recommend that you subscribe to QuickTech Solutions. Tony creates absolutely beautiful videos and he has the absolute talent to take any complicated topic, bring it down to earth, make it understandable, clear, and following Tony's videos, really anyone can do it, so definitely subscribe to Tony. And remember, if you must use port forwarding rules, remember, keep it in the back of your head that port forwarding is bad. Do whatever you can do in order to avoid using uh, uh, port forwarding. So guys, this was the demo. These were the risks and the alternatives. I hope this was uh, informative for you and I'll see you all guys in the next video. Bye bye.